You know, I've done a lot of interviews with a lot of Republicans. As y'all know, I go to Trump rallies a lot, and a lot of times it leaves me distraught. It's very concerning what is said. I want to show you the coolest Republican voter I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, and he is named Al. Incredible. He was doing a focus group with uh, Meet the Press, NBC News, and he was a part of a panel of voters who are Pennsylvania swing voters. Key block of voters in 2024 Pennsylvania will be crucial. And he got asked about the potential or the group got asked about the potential of sitting out of the election altogether. Would any of you for any reason just not go vote? And one voter says she might not vote if it's Biden versus Trump. I'll respond to that when she says it. Um, Al has a different take and has had enough with Donald Trump. And it's beautiful what he has to say. But uh, it takes a second to get to his response, but you'll see shortly. Them, Given their dissatisfaction with this potential rematch, and we underscore that word potential, how many of them would think about sitting out on election day? Here's what they had to say. Is there any chance that any of you sit home on election day? There is a chance, yeah. I. What will make it. you come out to vote? What will... Um, to the deciding factor. I mean, honestly, I feel if it's Biden versus Trump, I'm, I don't know if there's anything that could make me come out and vote that day, which I know is like really, um, ups it's upsetting because it's something that, you know, is a privilege for me to have. Um, I just don't want to have my vote, um, count in a way of someone that, of both people I don't really support wholeheartedly um, is really what it comes down to. So actually, before getting to Al, let me respond to Samantha there. Because she is expressing something that I've heard from a lot of people, unfortunately, which is number one, this belief that your vote means you're wholeheartedly supporting someone or you're now responsible for everything they do or you have to 100% love everything about them. What? When would you ever go and vote if that was the bar you'd have to cross? You look at the options, you say who's better. Now, I might think that, or I might be more excited to go vote for Biden than she might be, because not only am I voting against Trump, but I actually like a lot of stuff that Biden has done. But even if she does really not like the Inflation Reduction Act for some reason, or the PACT Act, I don't know why she'd be against that, or the American Rescue Plan at the beginning of Biden's presidency, or the infrastructure law, um, really doesn't want more broadband out to rural communities. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, I'm being a little bit silly. I'm sure her reasons are other reasons than that. But still, the swing voters I've talked to can acknowledge that Trump is being prosecuted for one or two of the cases attempting to allegedly unlawfully overthrow our lawful democratic process to install himself the president. And just let's just exclude everything else for a moment and think, what is it about Biden that you could possibly bring up, as Trump brought up multiple times earlier in today's show, is it the beach visits? You don't like seeing him in shirtless? Is that, no, um, that could possibly make that something you're not willing to vote against. And then you include civilly liable rapists, you include the fraudulent business practice, you include the classified documents, and on and on we go. And you include recent statements, the threats to Mark Milley, the term of the Constitution. It doesn't make any sense that even if you're not someone who is just so pumped about Joe Biden, which you don't have to be, of course. That's not what we're asking you about. We're not asking you if you wholeheartedly support everything about his policy agenda or him. It's, is he, in that matchup, the better option? And that is what is really sad that people can talk themselves into believing that if someone's not so great in their mind, then that is uh, a justification to sit out and allow for it to be more likely for an authoritarian to become president, as shown by what he's currently being prosecuted for and all of his uh, public statements, especially recently. But Biden's an octogenarian, so... There's two sides. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, continue. I don't think I Al, would. Al, is there any chance you would stay at home on election day? No. 
I, I love American democracy too much that uh, Biden and Trump, if it's a Biden and Trump race, then I would vote for Biden, even if he was dead. No chance I'd say I've never. And I'm a Republican. You know. No. And I'm a Republican. Let me play it one more time. Al. No chance I'd say I'm. You're making my day. You're making my week. This is too good. One more time. And then Trump race, then I would vote for Biden, even if he was dead. I would vote for Biden, Al says, even if he was dead. Yes, <laughs> just so good. He would vote for Biden over Trump. You're asking me if I'm going to sit out? Set aside the option of sitting out. I'm going to vote for Biden even if he's dead. I'm showing up even if he's dead to vote against Donald Trump. That's it right there. I know nothing else about Al from Pennsylvania, but based on that, I'd love to hang out with Al because um, it's the real deal. He's using a sort of hyperbolic example because obviously Biden, I don't think, unless it perfectly timed in between when he was put on the ballot and his uh, death that he would even be on the ballot. But <laughs> the point he's making is all these talking points about like, oh, but I'm concerned that Biden had that gaffe. And oh, I feel like on this issue, he this is too far left. Maybe one of these swing voters would say, I don't know. All of that. We just need to contextualize that. The other guy is your alternative. You don't get to choose your ideal candidate. This is the option right here. And again, while I might be more excited about what could happen if Democrats get a majority in the House, Senate, and Biden uh, president for the following two years after 2024, a lot of things that I actually would be pumped about could happen based on what we saw in the first two years of Biden presidency. But even if you don't feel that way, Al gets it. The other guy's Trump. So I don't care... 80 or dead, I'm voting for Joe Biden. That is just mm, perfection. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show and the bonus show on the weekends, you can do so by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. That's lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. And there's a link in the description.